Good afternoon, everyone. I think this First Communion is going to be extremely special because, of course, Jesus is here, which obviously makes it special. But it's really going to be like the first, uh, how about the Last Supper? Father Rico's a little student nod right now. Um, the, like the Last Supper, because there's 10 of you, and there were 12 apostles. So I guess I'll be 11, and we'll forget about Judas, right? Which is so awesome, yeah. So friends, just a gentle reminder of how we come to communion again, just like we practiced, right? Mr. Ptolemyo will call your name forward. You're going to come and stand right on this white circle in front of Father Rico on the ground, just like the ones that are close to you, right? I will say the body of Christ. You say amen. Then you remove the side of your mask and then present your altar hands for Jesus. Place them in your mouth. We make the sign of the cross and then we put our mask back and go back to our pews. Okay, you guys are, don't be nervous at all. Jesus loves you so much. Yeah, he's got a smile from ear to ear. Yeah, and then when it's time for us to come forward, as all of you are doing readings and the gifts are at the back ready for us, so you don't have to be nervous. Father Rico watches you every step of the way. Okay, now parents and families, as you know, we are live streaming for all of our families at home. This will be live through Facebook. Then I will render the file and I'll make a YouTube video, which I'll be emailing you later tonight, okay? If you don't get it by tomorrow morning, just contact the parish. For some reason, either your email was typed wrong or maybe it's in your spam or something because we want to make sure that all the grandmas, grandpas, and everyone else who loves us can watch too, okay? Does anyone have any questions at this time? Before we begin. Okay, let's just spend a few more moments in quiet prayer and then we will begin our beautiful First Communion Mass with Jesus.
Good afternoon, everyone. Let us stand as we begin our First Communion Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather at this Mass, a Mass that you ten friends have been waiting for for a long, long time. Jesus is here, and he welcomes you with open arms. As your names have been on our back banner, our whole parish has been praying for you since way back to our inscription mass so many months ago. Jesus is here and he loves you so much. And so we gather in thanksgiving to God for the gift of the Eucharist. I now invite Michael Gatto and Michael Ferrante and Owen Ford to lead us in our welcome.
Long, long ago, in a far and distant place, God planted a garden. It was a beautiful garden, filled with every kind of fruit and flowers. In the cool of the evening, God would walk in the garden, but it was a lonely garden. So God lay down beside a quiet stream. He dreamed, and the dream came true. He dreamed of us, his children, the most beautiful creation in his garden. Sometimes, though, his children lost their way in his garden, so he sent his son Jesus to look after them. We are his children, and Jesus is our shepherd. On the night of the Last Supper, Jesus gave his body and blood to the apostles. Today, Jesus invites us to a wonderful banquet at his table. This day is special. It is our very first Holy Communion. And as we gather around God's altar, we begin this Mass by remembering the times where we haven't loved God as we should. And we bow our heads and ask for his forgiveness, for Jesus is full of love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the one who calls us to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Now risen from the dead, you lead us to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve you with all our hearts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Let us be seated as we listen to God's holy word, and I invite Alessandro forward for our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the Lord said to Cyrus, his chosen one, I have taken hold of your right hand to help you conquer nations and and remove kings from power. City gates will open for you. Not one will stay close. Cyrus, you don't even know me, but I have called you by name and highly honored you because of Jacob, my servant, and Israel, my chosen one. Only I am the Lord. There is no other God. I have made you strong, though you don't know me. Now everyone from east to west will know that I am the Lord. No other gods are real. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Nathan Ford for our second reading. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silas, and Timothy. To the church in Thessalonica, the people of God the Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that God will be kind to you and will bless you with peace. We thank God for always mentioning you in our prayers. Each time we pray, we tell God our Father about your faith and loving work and about your firm hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, God loves you and we know he has chosen you to be his people. When we told you the good news, it was with the power and assurance that come from the Holy Spirit and not simply with words. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.
Let us stand for the gospel. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, you. to you, O Lord. The Pharisees got together and planned how they could trick Jesus into saying something wrong. They sent some of their followers and some of Herod's followers to say to him, Teacher, we know that you are honest. You teach the truth about what God wants people to do and you treat everyone with the same respect, no matter who they are. Tell us what you think. Should we pay taxes to the emperor or not? Jesus knew their evil thoughts and said, Why are you trying to test me, you show-offs? Let me see one of the coins that you use to pay taxes. So they brought him a coin and asked him, and he asked them, Whose picture and name are on this coin? The emperor's, they said. Jesus told them, Give the emperor what belongs to him, and give to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Friends, I just have to stay a little back because of obviously why I have to stay back. But I'm, you know I'm usually right there with you, right? Today is a very special day, as we said. We know you've been waiting a long time, and not because of the coronavirus. That just added a few more months. You've been waiting since the day you were born to receive Jesus in Holy Communion, right? I know you guys get tired of coming up like this for blessing. You want Jesus in your heart which is so awesome. And today is that day when Jesus comes down into Holy Communion and will touch your heart in a very special way for the very first time. And what's so awesome about Holy Communion is we receive Jesus over and over and over and over again. Raise your hand, everyone, if you like to eat. I'm going to raise both because I'm Italian. Yeah, we all like to eat, right? Eating is important because what does food do for our bodies, friends? What does food do for our bodies? Yes, Sam. Helps us grow. Uh huh. Anyone else? Asher? Keeps us alive. Uh huh. Did he have an answer? He just raised his hand. That's so good. Yeah, he's getting ready. What else does food do for us? Helps us grow, keeps us alive. Does it make us strong? Yeah, for sure it does, right? Now, why is it that we have to have like some of the foods we have in our display for Thanksgiving and the month of October? Like, can I eat French fries all the time? I mean, I could, but is that healthy? Why not? What kind of foods keep... Sam, you're on fire. Go for it. Yeah. You were just scratching your head? <laughs> That's honest. Asher. One more time, my friend. 
You should eat vegetables, that's right. Although we could argue that a french fry, you know, no, the salt makes it basically useless, yeah. But it gives us nutrients, right? It keeps us strong. So, Libby, protein, you're so awesome. Grade three growing on 30, right? That's so great, protein, yeah. That's the stuff that keeps us strong. Makes our bodies not only strong and alive, helps us to grow, and all of these things are important. So Jesus knows this, and he knows that we all like to eat. So that's why he gathered his 12 BFFs around the altar the first time. What are his 12 best friends called again? They are the, Asher again? The disciples, or a word that starts with an A, Michael? Apostles, that's so great. Livia? One more time. Did... They love? What did she say? God's love? Absolutely. You're so awesome. Yeah. Can you tell me one of the 12 apostles' names, friends? Do you know any of the 12 friends of Jesus? Yeah, you do. Think of one. One of Jesus' 12 friends. I'll come back to you. Michael? One more time. Mark. That's one of Jesus' friends. He wrote one of the Gospels for us. But he's not one of the apostles. Owen? Judas? Yeah, we all know Judas, right? Because he didn't listen to Jesus. Good answer. So, so far we have one. Livia? Thomas? Yeah. Alessandro? Matthew? Yeah. Nathan? John? Yeah. Libby? Peter? Yeah. That was your answer, Michael? Peter's brothers, Andrew? That's six. Asher? Mark, yeah, we really like Mark, eh? Yeah, he's so awesome. Yeah, he wrote one of the Gospels. We call him an evangelist. Evangelists are the four people. Like St. John is, and St. Matthew were apostles and evangelists, but Luke and Mark were not Jesus' apostles. Michael? Yeah, Matthew, that's so good. So let me help you. With, okay, go ahead, Michael. Did you say Paul? Yeah, another awesome friend of Jesus who wrote a lot of our New Testament, but Paul wasn't an apostle. He called himself the replacement for Owen's answer, Judas. Yeah. So we have Bartholomew. His name's always hard to remember. James and James again. And then we have Philip. And then we have Jude. These are the 12 apostles of Jesus. Uh, and Simon. I forgot Simon. There is Peter and then there's another Simon. So the 12 friends of Jesus gathered around him and Jesus said, I love you so much because Jesus knew that he was going to die for us, right? And so he prepared his apostles for our mass. And so he said, do this in remembrance of me. What did Jesus feed the apostles at the Last Supper, friends? Owen. His body, that's right. And before it became his body, what ingredients did he use? Livia? Yes, his body and his blood. You guys are awesome. And what ingredients did he use before he changed it? Sasha. Bread and what was the drink? Alessandro. What? Wine, exactly. That's why we use it at Mass. That's why we don't use pizza and Pepsi right? Because Jesus didn't use that. So we do exactly what Jesus used, and we do exactly as Jesus says, because Jesus is God, and he wants us to do this in remembrance of me. So every time we come to church at Mass, Father Rico, I know, looks like Jesus, but I'm not Jesus, right? But every priest there's this beautiful phrase in Latin, says, in persona Christi, in the person of Jesus. So when I say the words, take this all of you and eat of it, this is my body. Is that Father Rico's body? No, trust me, you don't want my body. I am not Jesus. 
This is Jesus' body. Do this in remembrance of me. And all of us, our moms and dads, brothers and sisters, and all who are gathering with us digitally, we love you, we are with you, we all become like the apostles. And Jesus brings us around his sacred altar so that we remember that Jesus was thinking of us not just today, he was thinking of all of you as our beautiful song began, enter the journey, you are called by name. It is Jesus who calls each of you, my dear friends, to his altar for the first time. And we are so grateful to God. This is sacrament number three. And this sacrament helps us that our souls get stronger. Our souls are what are inside of us. On the day of our baptism, your mom and dad dressed you in white, just like you're wearing white now. Some of you were baptized by me, and I remember that. I've been here long enough now that it's beautiful to see you grow. I looked at a baptismal record of the 120 grade twos. I baptized 97 of you. There's only uh, 23 that had moved into Grimsby since uh, their baptism, which is amazing. And we have watched you grow. Today you wear white again because your souls were blessed when mom and dad carried you into the church. And bapt uh, in uh, baptism, holy water was poured on your head so you would become his children. Now you are old enough to receive him in Holy Communion and he wishes to give you his grace, his love, and his mercy. And so each time we gather as church, I want you to think that it is Jesus who's calling you to his last supper. Whether you're your age now or when you get to be really old like Father Rico, we are always God's children and he wishes to give us strength. As you know, my daddy passed away a couple of weeks ago and we have been thinking so much about all the special times together. What's awesome about the altar is our loved ones we know go to be with God in heaven, don't they? But any time we want to connect with Jesus, our Blessed Mother, all of the saints, like Saint Joseph and all of our favorite saints, and all of our loved ones who have died, guess where we see them? At the altar. We don't see them with our eyes, but we gather, like our creed says, as the communion of saints. So we always are together. We never have to feel like we are alone. That's the beauty of the Mass. That's the beauty of the Last Supper. Because Jesus remains invisible, which means we can't see him. And all of the saints and angels, they're invisible, but they're here. And at Mass, heaven and earth are connected in the greatest prayer of our church. So my prayer for you is today that Jesus will fill you with his grace and that each and every day of your life, every Sunday as you come, or Saturday night, to receive him in Holy Communion, that God will fill you with his grace as you grow as his sons and daughters until that day in a very long time when the Lord Jesus will call us all home to be with him forever. May the Lord continue to bless you, to dear families and friends and all who support our young people. Let us continue to offer them to God and bring them often to this altar of grace. Friends, let us stand together as we profess our faith in God using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I now invite Sam and Asher and Libby and Livia and Sasha and Alessandro to come forward to lead us in our prayer of the faithful. In celebrating the Eucharist, we are doing what Jesus told us to do. Let us now pray for the things we need in order to be worthy followers of Jesus. The response is, give us this day our daily bread. Give the, us this day our daily bread. For the church that the Eucharist may form all believers into a community of love, we pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. For all of the countries that may share with the poor countries, so that none of God's children will go hungry, we pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. that we eat Jesus' body and blood at God's altar, and we may be filled with God's love. We pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. For the people who look after us and teach us, our mothers, fathers, priests, teachers, grandmothers, and grandfathers too. Please bless them, and once in a while, let them see the world through children's eyes. We pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. May our parents set aside each Sunday as your special day and bring us to church so that we may receive you often in Holy Communion. We pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. We remember all of our family members and friends who have died to live with God in heaven, that they will sleep peacefully in God's hands. We pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. And for all the prayers that we give to Jesus from our hearts. God of power and love, Fill our hearts with your love. 
bless these students in a special way as they are about to receive you today in the Holy Communion for the first time. Keep us faithful to you and one another. We make these in all prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated as we join in our offertory song as our altar is prepared. And I invite our six gift bearers, Nathan and Owen and Sam and Asher and Michael and Michael to the back to bring forward our gifts. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, For through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a respect for your gifts, that through the actions of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know that it belongs to your glory that you came to help us by coming down from heaven to earth, that the cause of our sin might become the means of our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adore you and rejoice and sing in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of song as we sing. Let us kneel together, and at this Mass we use Eucharistic prayer number three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, so that you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus' mercy. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Catherine of Alexandria, with St. Mark, 
with St. Luke and St. Paul and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Gerard our Bishop and all the bishops, all the clergy and religious and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of these ten families which you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we remember my papa and all of our deceased family members and friends. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this, your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those who join us digitally who will be receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Friends, this is the very special time where Jesus is going to come into your heart. As you hear your name called, I want you, even though it's Mr. Ptolemeo's voice, to know that it is Jesus calling you to his altar for the first time. So I will first give Jesus in Holy Communion to these ten young disciples of Jesus, and then each of us will have an opportunity to come forward as well. For those who are Catholic and are in a state of grace, as you approach me, please leave your mask in front of your face as I say the body of Christ. You say amen, then remove the side of your mask, present your hands as altar hands for Jesus, receive him in Holy Communion, make the sign of the cross, and then you place your mask back on your face. For those who are not Catholic and not in a state of grace, you may come forward and cross your arms like so to receive a blessing from Almighty God. Please wait for the ushers to escort you forward, family and friends, after I have given communion to our little ones. The Lord Jesus calls Owen Baird to his altar for the first time. Owen, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls Alessandro Carbonara to his altar for the first time. Alessandro, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls Michael Ferrante to his altar for the first time. Michael, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls Libby Ferry to his altar for the first time.
Libby, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls Michael Gatto to his altar for the first time. Michael, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls Nathan Hyde to his altar for the first time. Nathan, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls Sasha Petrina to his altar for the first time. Sasha, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls Livia Scandinavio to his altar for the first time. Livia, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls Sam Trainer to his altar for the first time. Sam, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls Asher Young to his altar for the first time. Asher, the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I now invite Sasha and Libby to come forward for our thank yous. There have been loss of firsts in our lives, first tooth, first two-wheeler, first day of school, but nothing can be more beautiful than our first Holy Communion. people who helped make this day a special memory. Father Rico, our teachers, and also our parents and families. Thank you, friends, for the thank yous.
Friends, as I shared with you, and you may have already had a look, on your pews are the other two surprises that I promised you. There's a special cross for you to hang in your bedrooms that already has a hole in the back for mom and dad to help you to put on a nail or a clip to put in your room to remind you of this special day. Also a, a certificate which shows this is the day that you receive Jesus in Holy Communion for the first time of many times as you receive his grace. Also remember that our friends in the Catholic Women's League bought you those crosses that you hang from your necks as well. Those are also for you to keep, but we will eventually need the gowns back. So immediately following our recessional hymn, parents, as I mentioned to you already, we will have an opportunity to have pictures here at the base of the altar, if you wish, with myself and your son or daughter and the rest of your family, if you like. Uh, we just have to keep all of our masks on, of course, while we're indoors. Then I will invite you outside in the Marian Grotto for an opportunity where we can be sans mask, no masks, and uh, also see those beautiful smiles that are underneath the masks. In the foyer of the church, you'll notice we uh, can no longer take a collection during the Mass. These are uh, collection boxes are in the foyer of the church. These funds go to support youth ministry, so they don't deal with our general operations here at St. Joseph. So uh, I appreciate your generosity as you leave the church today. You can just drop them in. There is no exchange of things. You could just drop it in the box. And all these funds go to support the youth of our parish. And I thank you in advance on their behalf. Thank you to Mr. Tolomeo, representing all of the staff at Our Lady of Fatima School, to our musicians, to uh, our favorite videographer, Chris, and all of the Knights of Columbus for helping us to make this day special. And to all of you parents and those who join us digitally, of course, I would want everybody here. It's one of the hardest things is these restrictions, but we all understand that phrase that we're so getting tired of hearing, we're all in this together, but it's true. And uh, certainly we are all in this together in prayer. And once again, I thank you for your prayers, for my family. It really touches my heart. I was just thinking back today to the day of my first communion, uh, which seems like just yesterday at St. Alfred's Church, uh, where my mom and dad brought us to church as well, and my two little brothers. So may the Lord continue to bless all of you, and I trust that you will look back to this day with great memories. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.